after that initial programming language, Visual Basic 1, uh, I noticed that the computer programming and database management and the software engineering technology students take a, an additional four courses in Visual Basic. Mm -hmm. What happens in those four courses? Well, once we get past the introductory course, our goal is you, have a now, you now have a foundation. And you should, at that point, start feeling good about the fact that you can do this type of work and you're interested and excited about moving on. Uh, in SCT and CPDB, um, we basically can move on into Visual Basic. Uh, VB2, 3, 4, and 5, as you spoke of, are basically a continuation uh, of a series of courses. VB2, we continue on with what I like to call the introductory, the introduction to VB. Uh, you'll learn more concepts in VB, and by the time you're done with that, you have a really good foundation in VB.net. In addition, you're also learning a little bit about object-oriented, something we have to bring up here. Object-oriented is everything we're teaching here. Uh, it, it's a methodology of programming. That's all it is. And so as you're going through VB1, I should say, 2 and VB2, you're continuing to learn the concepts and, and, and the terms around object-oriented that will help you in all the languages that we teach, from Java, C++, and so on and so on. So VB2, we do this. VB3, we really dive into object-oriented. We start defining it more, and we actually get into writing our own what's called classes, object-oriented type classes, uh, which will actually derive an object. Uh, we teach you things like about inheritance, we'll teach you about polymorphism, we'll teach you about overloading, we'll teach you about all these things in VB3 that you actually start writing classes. Again, everything we do is around object-oriented in this in Cincinnati State. With that said, then we also move into how databases, that maybe Don Young, Peter talked about before, start interacting with our programming languages. We'll start using tools to start doing that, bring them both together. I mean, as, as, even though we have a programming language, the most important piece the two have to meet, I should say, and they're both very important in creating a very sophisticated, efficient uh, application when it's all said and done. Four and five are unique, even though they're called VB, we actually almost kind of turn the page in a way and take everything you learned up to there and start looking at a relatively new tool called ASP.NET. Though ASP's been around for a while, the whole .NET and ASP.NET is relatively new, especially in the last couple years. In ASP.NET 3.5, which is what we teach, uh, it's state-of-the-art, very powerful, but it all deals with web applications. You'll take everything you learn from VB1, 2, and 3 and be able to apply it to web apps using ASP.NET 3.5. And we spend VB4 and VB5 in doing so. And when you get done with this, our ultimate goal in that whole series is to make you a .NET programmer. Okay? Those are the terms you'll see out there on the the, the one ads, and, you know, and, and looking for a job, .NET programming. Yes, you can do things in VB, you can do things in C Sharp, and there's other languages you can use in .NET. We chose VB, and there's opportunities to learn C Sharp within our program too. But primarily, we want you to be a .NET programmer, an efficient one that can actually be hired tomorrow to start utilizing this language. Okay, well I understand that a little bit better. I did notice that the SET students and the BIS students take a sequence of courses in Java. What's different about Java than Visual Basic and what happens in those courses? Well, Java is a very popular language. Uh, if you start looking at some of the, um, uh, do some research on what, you know, who's using what out there in the world, Java is one of the top languages out there still. Uh, not still, and ongoing. People like Java. The reason they like Java so much is a derivative of C and C++, which gets into some really terse type statements that you, know, that you can actually write, where basic is more English-like. Some programmers really like those you know, exact statements, and that's where C and C++ kind of you know, takes its lead. Java fell right off of that. Java was, uh, was developed around 95 from Sun Microsystems, uh, really to work on their Unix platform. It was in direct competition with Microsoft. 100%. Uh, the thing about Java that's unique is though it does some of the same things that you can do in .NET, it's cross-platform and, and it's portable. And what I mean by that, you can go from one uh, type of hardware to another type of hardware seamlessly, where in .NET you really can't. Though there might be some plugins to make it work, it doesn't work all that well. Java was made that you can go on a Unix system, a Linux system, a Solaris system, and so on and so on, those types of operating systems and work in all of those, including Windows, where .NET can't. The reason we teach Java is that um, because of all those unique operating systems we can work on, it's very popular. So we teach it in BIS because 
like I mentioned before, BIS, we do a lot of our programming on an IBM system where Java is used heavily. Um, and also it's used in all the other platforms and SCT, once again, being more of a systems and engineering type of major, Java is also used. So the difference between the two are, I don't want to say night and day, they still solve problems, but it really comes down to what platforms you want to use it on and what are you using and so on. And uh, Java is pretty easy to use. Uh, and like again, it's supposed to be, it's very portable and it's more cross-platform. So we like the fact that we're teaching that along with what we're teaching in .NET. The unique high-level language course that I see associated with your program, uh, BIS, that the other two majors don't take is RPG. Mm -hmm. What's that and why do they take that? Well, BIS, once again, our, our, our whole uh, goal here is to be a, a, a business type major you know, and, and basically allow you to learn how technologies work and how to apply technologies in business. Uh, because we also deal with one platform, one specific platform we deal with, I should say, in BIS is the IBM platform. Not solely IBM, but IBM platform is one we use. We are an IBM uh, academic initiative uh, partner with them, which we're very excited about. One of the only ones around uh, in this region of the country. With that, RPG provides a unique opportunity for our students to continue to learn how to develop, okay, uh, and, but develop in this language. It's an older language. It's still a third generation language. It's still a high level language, but it's an older language. But there's millions and millions of lines of code that are sitting out there being maintained and still developed today in this region on IBM type machines. We feel by teaching our students RPG, we will give them the opportunity to go find those jobs. A lot of the people doing RPG today are retiring. IBM is very concerned about that. So with that, people coming in can learn RPG and go take those jobs. There are those jobs out there. RPG is not a very exciting language overall if you compare it to things maybe like C++ or VB.net and so on, but it's still a development language, still deals with solving a problem, still deals with everything associated with it. But uh, we're excited about offering because of the opportunities for employment right now, this day, in this area.